uh, adapted is not uh, you change your second A with O. Uh, he adopted humanity, not the humanity is adapted to his divinity. Second, everything he did was as a person, not as a nature. Uh, just in our way of doing things, we do things as a person with our human nature. So in the case of Jesus, you do not compartmentalize him. When you compartmentalize him, you fall into what we studied, although just in a touch, in a way that we only touched it, Nestorianism. Nestorianism is separating the two natures in such a way that it almost becomes, or Jesus almost becomes two persons. So you do not make the compartmentalization when he got tired, when he was hungry, he was so as human. And then he would change, uh, change nature as it were, when he performs miracles, he did so as divine that will be both confusing as well as uh, wrongly understanding that Jesus was a single person. Everything he did was a person. When he died, he died as a person, though it would mean different things to the human nature, how the human nature died and what in the sense uh, the divine nature also shared in the death, uh, not that it ceased to live uh, as the human nature would be, but uh, in even in the death on the cross, he did as a person, uh, therefore as God-man, without compartmentalizing uh, the natures. <clears throat> from Raymond Manaig uh, from Kalamba, since God the Father is spirit, and Jesus was spirit prior to the incarnation, then he became God-man. Question is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the God, of God the Father, I just want to know this the correct way to state God's revelations. I assume in Genesis 1 1 says the Spirit of God, the verse talks about the Holy Spirit. Please confirm or correct. Genesis 1 12. Now the earth was, you mean Genesis 1 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Yes, it's, it's the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, uh, we will study the Holy Spirit's relation to the Father and the Son when we come to the doctrine of the Holy Spirit next semester, uh, and we will look at the concept of procession. We believe that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and from the Son. The Son is begotten by the Father, so eternal generation, then there is eternal procession, but that's already advanced uh, as far as the course is concerned. Justin Sabado, uh, CBCM, if an angel of the Lord appeared in the Old Testament, also called Yahweh, then what should we call an angel of the Lord in the New Testament? Like, for example, the angel who appeared to Mary Joseph was angel Gabriel, but what about Paul, the case? Uh, what about Paul, the, in the case of Peter in Acts 12, you know, was rescued from prison? Was it another name like angel Gabriel or Yahweh himself? Lastly, did an angel of the Lord appear in the New Testament as Yahweh even after the ascension of Christ? Yahweh is a uh, generally patriarchal revelation. So it happened in the patriarchal period. Then after that, there were other ways in which God revealed uh, himself or the second person of the Godhead. But in the New Testament, the revelation now took the form of Christ incarnate. And therefore, other angelic appearances would no longer be Christ. Uh, other angelic appearances in the New Testament would not be uh, Christ appearing as an angel because he is now human. So that, that's an important uh, distinction. So uh, the angel of the Lord as messianic revelation is concentrated in the patriarchal period. But after that, we will be dealing with other messianic revelations, which we do now with a messianic psalm.